Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the red snappers on your long arm frame. But first of all, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new, like my videos, and share with your quilty friends. So, I have a King Quilter Elite 2 um, frame. It's 12 foot, and my red snappers are connected inside of this in a channel that I sewed so it has a bar right here on the end you'll be able to see it has a red bar they slide in and out you can see that I also have it on my backing fabric right here this is the bar that my backing goes on they come out really easily makes it really easy to use now all frames are different but the same pretty much so most bars have your backing bar and an idle bar this one right here is for my quilt top, and this one right here is for my backing as well. Some frames, it sits differently, one folds under, but it's pretty much the same concept throughout all frames. There are some frames that only have a backing bar and sit flush and low, like my old frame did. So just know that this loading experience is different for everybody, but pretty much universal through every every frame so we're going to start with backing so this is the backing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to find my designated top and my designated bottom i prefer when i was pinning and same goes with the red snappers i prefer to use the selvage end so what I'm going to do is my selvage end is going to go on this bar, but first I'm going to toss it up and over, and I don't care if it's centered up anymore. I'm just going to toss it up and over the whole entire frame, and I'm going to let it hang over the frame back there. And then I'm going to take this bar right here, which is what my backing fabric goes on. I'm going to pull it down a little and lift it up and over. I'm going to lift it pull it back just a little up and over right here is good onto itself like a burrito so I'm gonna lift it up to where my little red snapper um, snap on piece the piece that you snap to is kind of sitting right here on the edge where your hand can pinch it so I'm going to do that all the way down the whole entire frame just like this I'm gonna make sure it's nice and even all the way across so here are the different sizes. When you have your red snappers, you have a really long. You get four or six of these, and six of these shorter ones, you can see by far they're different. And then you get six of these little two inch guys. I don't really use these little tiny ones. I just load the long ones. So I'm gonna start by flattening this out, just like this, the whole entire back just along my frame like this. Ouch, that hurt. I have a, a habit of hurting myself in my videos. I'm gonna line it up right here to where it's crossing over this piece about half an inch all the way down. So it's sticking out about half an inch the whole entire distance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one of my long ones and I'm gonna place the part that has the opening over this hole, I mean over the hooker piece, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it like this, and I'm literally gonna push it down with my thumb using the bottom of my hand on the bar, and I'm gonna push it down like this. All the way across, and it looks like all I need is a small one now. Mm, nope, actually. Another big one. So, yeah. I'm going to grab the next big one and I'm going to butt it up to this first one. And I'm going to snap that into place. Everything should still be nice and level. I'm going to use my thumb. We thought we'd bring you in closer. So, again, we're going to butt this next one up. And I'm using my thumb on the top and the rest of my hand on the bottom of this bar. And I'm literally pushing down on it bending as I push down just like this. It's very easy. 
all the way the rest of the way just like that so it's completely on you can see it's hooked it's grabbed the whole entire thing all the way down just like that so now let's do the top so we're going to take this and knock it down so we're knocking it down all the way and what i'm going to do is you need to make sure on your ends that you can roll your bar do you know which way your bar rolls up well i know that it unrolls if i go counter no this is clockwise while i'm standing here so counterclockwise or yeah, counterclockwise would be rolling it up so what we'll do is we're going to start rolling up the backing fabric and this is the part where this bar gets removed because i'm not going to be loading my top so i'm just going to move that out of the way and what i'm going to do is smooth this out as i go just like this it's not very hard because it's very small and you can see with it hanging over and grabbing that cloth leader that it's keeping it nice and flat and nice and flush the whole entire way And then I'm getting it to where I can see. I'm going to keep adjusting it because I want to see the um, back a little bit more. Right about. We're going to line this back piece up now to where it would be even with this bottom bar. So it's about right there. And what I'm going to do is go to the back. And now I'm going to pull the rest of this bar out. I should lock this one in place so that way nothing moves. We're going to pull this bar out and under this rail right here. This is the leveler. I want it out and under that leveler all the way. And then we're going to lift it up and over just like that. And you'll have to pull underneath. To get it up and over the rest of the way up and over and now you still have a level table going on but what I'm gonna do is carefully unsnap this and roll this back onto the backing until my salvage end is equal with the end so now we're rolling it to where you can see that that fabric is equal right about there so we're gonna come over here so you can see I have about a half quarter inch to a half an inch hanging past this bar all the way down and I'm making sure as well as this is still sitting super flat across this right here in that section so what we're gonna do is lock that other one in place and don't forget to check out my cat who's hanging out down there on the floor because remember I told you I made a little practice quilt and I threw it back there and that's been his bed for like five months wow. now. <laughs> wow. yeah. All right, so we're gonna come back here. I'm smoothing it out. Everything is level, everything is flush. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my long, long piece first. And what I'm gonna do is this bar is now level with this idler bar down here on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and the same procedure as before we're going to snap this on here, except this time I'm using the palm of my hand. And I'm pushing with the palm of my hand on this, on the red snapper attacher. And I'm using the rest of my hand on the back side of the idle bar to give me a little bit of pressure. So we're just going to do this all the way down. And it's grabbing it the whole way. And if you don't feel comfortable enough, just make sure your backing fabric is way bigger, like four or five inches bigger than your quilt top. Um, if you don't feel comfortable enough with only having a quarter to a half an inch of uh, fabric hanging over the backside, just make sure your backing is piece big enough. This backing is from a client's quilt, so um, sometimes they aren't completely, I mean, it's like three inches, but I'm like, edge to edge so these red snappers 
they make it a little bit harder. So I, I, you need to make sure that you have extra backing. I'm going to be tight like an inch on each end. So just making sure. So I'm going to grab another one of these now. I'm literally going to butt it up to this using my hand. Same thing. It's just going across it. And the reason why I'm bending it is because it's so stiff and tight, it makes it easier to just roll it on here while bending. And I'm just gonna take it the rest of the way down, even though I don't really need it. Just gonna hook it anyway, because if you don't, it can get, you can grab it accidentally and yank it off. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So I have it completely and utterly on there. So the next thing you do is just drop it down and roll this up, and then we're gonna come around to the other side. So we come back around to the front. We make sure we unsnap this because we want this loose again. What we're gonna do is continue rolling it back like this. And then if you have rollers on the end, you can do that too. I do not on this. And then we snap both into place. And if you see, there's a little bit of sag on this end. We can make that go away by simply coming to the end of the frame, unsnapping it, and literally slight, just giving it a slight tug. Hmm? So as you're doing that, and you can see just that slight tug like this of the top flattens out the whole entire thing on both ends. So then once you have it nice and flat, you would just go ahead and snap it into place, knowing that everything is flat like a table all the way across. So that is one way that I load, but sometimes there are quilts that are really, 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 really long. The backs take up my whole frame. So I'm going to show you, even though this is a small one, I'm going to show you another way because it's a little bit easier when the back is just so long and out of control and you're having a hard time. As well as when you don't have your, I never use my top bar because I don't roll up my tops of my quilts. So I kind of leave that off a lot. If I don't want to pick it up off the floor and put it back on here, I'm going to show you how to load it with just this bar on there and not doing the burrito method. So just quick to show you before we get to the next one, you just unhook it like this and pull. Unhook it like this and pull. And look at that, it's unloaded. So the next step would be to unsnap this obviously and unroll, unhook when your quilt is done, and unhook when your quilt is done. Just like that. So that's how it comes off. Now let's say that the quilt top, we're going to pretend here because I don't have a big huge quilt top. We're going to pretend that the quilt top is super duper huge and it is hard to control because it keeps falling and you're getting super frustrated. Well first off, when the um, top bar is not on there and all you have is this bar, we're going to line this bar up just like this with this piece literally laying right here along the top. Just like that. And if you want it to stay in place, lock the bar. So we're going to go ahead and the same procedure, oops, same procedure we're going to throw our big, huge top, this is a pretend one, over the whole top. We're going to do the same procedure by flinging it nice and flat over at least this bar. So if it was taking up this whole bar, we want it to be nice and flat. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our end and we're going to stick it right here over this bar. And it's going to fall a bazillion times, so that's where these little guys come in. Let me grab one. So that's where these little guys come in. So your quilt top is taking up the whole frame and you want it to work. Line the backing right up to the line that you created when you sewed your seam. Come over to the other side. Grab another tiny little guy. And do that same thing. Line that fabric right up to that line and temporarily hold it in place. And if you need a third one, grab a third one. Because we're just temporarily holding it in place because it's so big, it's, it's really hard to control, you know? 
then we're going to flatten everything out. Same table making type procedure where everything is nice and flat because this bar's cloth leader is holding it flat back there. So then we're going to again grab our super long piece and we're going to remove this one to start. We're going to replace it with this. And now you just have the one bar to worry about. Always another thing, make sure that your backing fabric is facing down. Your right side is down, wrong side up. I don't know how many times people I've seen load their quilts and it was accidentally the wrong way. So again, we're just going to bend it and hook it on here. Just like this, except we're using only one bar. So we just have to watch our little pole here and make sure that everything's staying lined up. We're just using our thumb, same way as before. We're gonna go ahead and grab the other long piece, butt that up, same procedure, just lining it up. Your bar is snapped, so it's not gonna roll. Remove this last one that doesn't seem to wanna remove. one hand we did that now here's where the tricky part comes in if this thing is taking up the whole space what's going to happen is you're never able to keep a really really long one because it's going to start sagging when you roll it up so we're going to roll this up and this time i'm just going to try to do this nice and quickly so that you guys can get the general idea of it nice and quickly just rolling it up Smoothing it out, just like this, making sure it's staying straight. But this time, we're going to leave it hanging over a little bit extra, because what we're going to do is lock this bar. We're going to take this back one behind the um, idler bar. We're going to pull it completely out. Make sure it's behind the idler bar, under it, over here at the machine, and it's completely out, all the way across. And now your big, huge quilt top is going to fall, but that's okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to roll this up just a little to where your big, huge, this piece, it can fall, don't, don't worry about that. I'm going to grab two of these real quick. We need two long ones and some of these holder things. What you're going to do is you're going to pick up one end, and since we're using the salvage, it lines up perfectly. We're just going to leave this hanging lined up on our table like this. Usually the machine would be way over there. We're going to line it up on our table. This is good for people who have long arms too. So you're just going to line it up right here at the end. We're going to put a snap on it. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. And you're using your table as your balance because the quilt top is so big. So that you're just going to put these on here to hold it on. Just like this. All the way down. And what we're going to do, I'm not going to clip this in because I didn't grab all the pieces. Instead, we're going to start putting it on. So it's the same concept, except this time, we're just pushing against the table, just like this. And I find this works with the big, huge tops better than trying to get it to stay up there, because it really doesn't like to stay on top because there's so much fabric pulling on it. So this time, all we're doing is pushing on the table. And if you don't have a table back there, then you can't do it this way. <laughs> And I'm sorry about that. I do know there are some machines that don't have a table across the back. So I'm just gonna pop this off. And it stays pretty straight if you're using your salvage as a reference. The machine just slides on the rails. There's no table. Because the machine has to go back and forth. Yes, if the machine will go back and forth. This doesn't mess with the machine. No, for the ones that don't have a table, what does the machine sit on? There has to be rails. Oh, yeah, there's rails. There's just no table. Oh, that's weird. 
I didn't know that. And then I'm just going to continue hooking this because it's really long and I started at the opposite end, but that's okay. Making sure it's pushed down. And then you just do the same as before where you pull this up, unsnap this, and you straighten them out. And if you have a sag, I just come around to the front like this, straighten it out, and then I roll it nice and tight by giving it a little pressure, pressure, and then bam, it's loaded nicely. And that was without having to worry about folding it over because your quilt top was so big, it just kept falling. So that's how to do it that way, and just pick up a piece at a time and just keep adding your red snappers. So that is it. That is how you load your frame with the red snappers. Um, it's fairly easy. Don't forget to put your side clamps on when you're done loading before you put your quilt top on. And if you have your quilt top on the quilt top rail, just know, you know, that goes on and over the batting and so on and so forth. So I hope this helped. Those of you who have issues loading your long arm with the red snapper system, uh, it saves lots of time. I just loaded it twice in however long I've been on here. So yeah, that works. So that's it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, like my videos, and share with your quilty friends. Bye for now, everyone.